someone who does precision guesswork based on unreliable data provided by those who with questionable knowledge. That's what this project is about. <laughs> That's what engineers call POV. <laughs> so, so, so we're going to talk about a, a project we've been doing. As a matter of fact, the interesting thing I I just remember that when we went and go to the 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 Land Transport Authority of uh, Singapore to make the presentation about the proposal. Elisa was actually here interviewing. Yeah, yeah. I was the one who presenting that day, actually. Because you don't remember because you're here, right? <laughs> so, so anyway, so we talk about this is a real time applications, you know, for us is a geophysicist, especially is a really golden opportunity to to actually take some of our theory into practice. So it's done. It's done. Oh, down. Oh, okay. It's not. So, yeah, Purdue, NUS, and I'm at the Chinese University of uh, Hong Kong. So, one of the biggest problem. This is not as relevant in rural Indiana, but certainly a bit more relevant in Chicago, Indiana, but much more so in Asia. So, the last. The, the biggest, uh, largest cities around the world, you see this is Tokyo, Dali, Shanghai, Sao Paulo, Mexico City, uh, it's all around the world, right? That the US is much more spread out. Although there's the New York City in there, it's also very crowded. Uh, so what are we going to put all the, all these people we need urban underground space for current and future development. So the reason to grow underground, the first thing is transportation needs. Right? You, do, you do subways. Although if you're in New York City, you can talk about the second avenue subway for how many years now? I don't even know. Years. <laughs> <laughs> so how we got to the there? Yeah. But but you know, but New York City has a good subway system. You you, you know, a hundred years ago. The U.S. is much more into getting building the right subway, right, for transportation. All of a sudden, stop. Uh, so, but it it really relieves the congestion, right? We want to keep the service for people centric activities. Right? You want to keep the transportation away from it. You know, you go go to any big city. You 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 really uh, uh, Chicago. You know, you're going right now trying to get up to Chicago and <laughs> you, you can see the congestion easy, right? Climate change, of course, we talk here about all, all of that, right? Land courses, resilience, and of course, aesthetics is part of that. You want to hide the dirty things, you want to keep the pretty things up on top, right? So, so. We need to drill tunnels to construct underground space. Right. So, actually, the first part of it, all the cities have it now the sewers, pipeline, you know, water pipe, electrical pipes, fiber cables, all that, common service tunnel. Then you go into uh, subway systems, major road and rail network. You know, in Singapore, for example, a few years ago, they built this huge uh, underground pathway undercut the Marina Bay area, going cut from, from one side to another. And uh, in China, across the Pearl River Harbor, you know, Guangdong South, they're going to build, I don't know how long it is, Basically, connecting from Shenzhen over to Jungsai, you know, it, it's, it's really mostly tunnels. And right now, they've completed that one from Hong Kong over to Macau. Part of it is underground. 
and the other one is is is, is bridges. So a lot of, of infrastructure being built around the world, and these are typically fifteen to uh, uh, fifty meters deep. And then the deep tunnel sewage system, and in Singapore especially, they have a lot of storage. Uh, a lot of uh, Singapore sensitive stuff like uh, military equipment, assault heat, and the like. Okay, so so they need the cabins. They need to know how to drill it. They they need to 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 do it. So so typically, now you go to Hong Kong, for example, one of the major exchange, Emerald, uh, Emerald T, is about six stories tall. You know, four, six different layers of of, of subway connections into it. Right. So you, you see all that people are building uh, building downwards rather than just upwards right, for various reasons. So this is all good, except what are the risks? You build a subway coming through. Incidentally, this is a, a tunnel boiling machine. If you ever that have never seen one of these, you have a chance to see it, you'll be extremely impressed. This, this thing's a huge. <laughs> <laughs> and, 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 you know. Huh? Well, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It, 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 it's just basically, I think the big one. Well, the, yeah, the, the project that we're working on is six meters. Six meters, right? Diameter. Yeah. It's pressurized in the ground. So there are literally a chamber. At times, worker has to go in and change the drill bed. There's a chamber that the worker has to be prepared for that kind of pressure. They have to go in. And it, when I first visited, it literally felt like a spaceship. Yeah, 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 yeah. It, 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 where the gear and you have to prepare this huge infrastructure. It's really exciting. They actually need to drill a big hole in the ground in order to lower this thing down to start the process going. So, so what you have is a very common issue: cavity, water layers, isolated boulders, thought or interface. And increasingly, as we go into the existing urban space, abandoned foundation, right? And the engineers tell you, oh, we, we, we have foundation uh, findings here, 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 and here. Well, the only accurate, but then they ask you how, how good it is, accurate, how to read it. That's not good enough, actually. It, and 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 sometimes it's worse than a couple of meters. <laughs> they they uh, so it's really harmful to cut the stairs, cause overrun, schedule delay, catastrophic accidents. I don't know. I remember distinctly, the cavity water layer is a very big issue. I think it's Malaysia. They actually drill into a cavern, and the whole thing collapsed into it. Multi million dollar cost over, right? right? I mean, getting back out is not easy. <laughs> easy. So, so there's a lot of cost, right? The question then now is oh, that's before I go into that. And then the other thing is after you drill the tunnel, how stable is the tunnel? Can you, can you estimate? You know what's surrounding you now that you drew it through. What's what's surrounding you? So so this Did is you have an example from Boston. <laughs> well, that's a panel falling down. That's not quite. Right. That's not quite a wall. Like a big thing. Yeah, a big thing. That that was just a civil engineering issue when they don't. <laughs> well, but this is this water accumulation. You know. Oh, you should know Switzerland. 
And then, and then the Guangzhou one is, is also, you know, a lot of water seeping in and basically uh, eroding the pipe and then collapsing, right? Oil and gas guys we refer some, in some ways very similar, although we refer to three when you're well bored and you're just the men got eroded, one way or the other collapsed, and, and, and some of these things, uh, sim similar things happen. So, so knowing what, what, what the condition is, it's also very important, right? So, how do we detect these, these obstacles? So this is the, the, the things that get back to my previous job, uh, or more, actually much more than previous job now, that, that just the, the LWD, do you know where you're drilling into? What's next? Right? There's fuel steering. Where, uh, what are we drilling into? So the typical, typically we would not know what's ahead because we're only doing to survey ball holes. It will be 50, 25, 50 meters apart. You're not sampling close enough to actually know what is going on. And the samples are uh, uh, not appropriate size locally, right? And it's very difficult to assess from, surf from the surface what's going on before you go on. So, so if you imagine you're drilling underneath uh, New York City or the, you can't get into these buildings and try to do a survey to see look, looking what's up there. Right? So that's the that's part of the problem. And in Singapore, we're just talking about now the the cross island line, the drilling underneath uh, a reservoir. I can't run uh open bottom survey on it. They won't let you. That's a preserve preservation area. So you don't the drilling blind, literally drilling blind. Okay, so, so this is what we would do now. The need for our, what we're doing is seismic tunnel look ahead. So we do what is in front of us. It's a very much of a challenge. It is not an easy job. There's only certain things we can do uh, geophysically. GP, GPI is, is, is not deep enough. It's not fun looking, you know. DC resistivity also the same way, right? And it's also disturbed by metallic machine. The people who suggest using inductive methods, but we don't have any system that's big enough to, to really do that. Uh, and, and you talk to, to one of my Hollywood techniques, says, oh, in principle, you can do that. You can, you can Model that take away the defect of the of the uh, PBM and 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 look ahead, but nobody's trying to haven't have done that yet because there's a lot of costs in terms of building such a system to, to look ahead. So we we are down to seismic methods, and people have done seismic method, but none of them have done it the way we have done it. So, so, and this is a very quick look. I thought I took this slide out, but anyway. So, so the the, uh, the point is we we're looking at both active and passive seismic method. Passive seismic method is like seismic while drilling, and and S, the old SWD if. Uh, if uh, Stefan can still remember, we used the, the, yeah. the cutter blade as the source. And then, and then we received the signal as try to, to use statistics and collect a lot of data to look at what we try to do. Active is still be simply using an active uh, source inside the tunnel to, to get it. The difference is we, we've done, yeah, uh, there's not much 
so much. That's it. So, so the, the, we, we use a much longer array to do to that. So this is the, the independent TBM independent look ahead system. So we got the key of it is we do a lot of uh, 3D internal simulation to kind of see what kind of wave types are we expecting to see. So, so of course, what you do in terms of simulation and what you actually see are not quite identical, but it's close enough to give you a clue of what you're looking at. You acquire the data, you do multi-physical simulation and analysis, and then you do uh, getting a result out. Okay, I'll, I'll show quick you the features, no interruption, we just do it. They, when they have periodically stopped to stop drilling, we can just do it very quickly. And it's really data-driven physics-based uh, solution. Okay, so let's see. Huh? It's the active method. Okay, <laughs> so you can see uh, we put array of receivers, single single component geofog along it. Next to this is all the TBM stuff. So we're not interfering with it. We're doing it while you're doing it. The key of it is we also learn a lesson that we should we need to to use a horizontal form here because this is the, the, the horizontal horizontal motion, not a vertical motion. So 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 we go, go, we do active. If there's obstacle here, we we'll flex and come back, right? But all the seismic guys know that we don't have any aperture, right? So it's, it, it's a challenging problem. What are we, how do we, we actually know what's going on? So we do a lot of semblance and, uh, so picking up the receivers, uh, reflections. So this is one of the examples we got. Now this yellow line, orange line, this orange line here is estimated with the velocity, uh, what we call a penetration index, a combination of uh, drilling top and uh, the direct measurement from the TBM. So this is not a velocity. This is the measurement in some ways of the stiffnesses of the rock you're looking at, right? And the property. And the dotted lines are our in array velocity. So each, as we move along, we have uh, array velocity to move out over the array with 24, uh, receiver array. So you can see, forget about uh, the, the detail, but basically the general trend in the marine clay and, and drill formation, we are detecting a consistency of a change in formation from a lower velocity to a higher velocity, uh, consistent with what you're seeing in the penetration of it. So that's one kind of confirmation. And one of the things that, as I said before, right, we, we just, this new precise data, we're just making certain, we're not making a concrete uh, prediction about what kind of physical property or whatever. It's just, you, you, what you want to do is see whether there's any changes in the properties that you go through, right, and see it here. And, 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 you don't, if we want to see drastic changes, you know, it's all stop what is going on, all right? So, and these are distinct 
uh, points and you do see some uh, reflections. But, you know, as I said, you, you know, this is a single line. Right? Don't overinterpret what, 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 what actually is going on. But, however, we have an advantage because this thing is actually drilling as it go along. So you have a short location and a, a receive profile. <laughs> this is one shot data. This is the real model inversion result. Well, the one shot data, we're not getting a good result, right? However, if I keep shooting, this what, yeah. As you move forward, your reflection doesn't change. So you can start getting your file location, getting closer and closer together and get a good estimate of what, what it is and how far it is. So the key of this is actually being able to do the multi shot and the access, as the TBM goes, then it will give you a much better uh, result. Okay, so this is just a, a conclusion slide. So uh, basically, that's what's different from us uh, doing them before. Now, there's a there are three different presentations on our website that one by Yongzhou, uh Fan Gang and uh, Alex talking about uh, a couple of them talking about using DA and passive uh, data. So you can actually see how the data is, right? And uh, what's Yong Zhao doing? What's Yong Zhao doing? Uh, Yong Zhao was seeing the, the software. And Carl's been looking at the new, uh, more of that. Uh, uh, data. So, okay. the source is that happening? Yeah. And you're not using the longer source that you're covering Yeah, we are. That's the passive side. Okay. So, there are two different set of experiments. Okay. We have not combined them. We have, huh? When you use the hammer, you must have machine. Lesson. Who was doing that? Alex? Combining the two? Oh, no. Oh, no. I need to check this. <laughs> I'm not review that. But... <laughs> okay. Thank you.